Live from San Francisco, it's theCUBE. Covering RSA Conference 2020 San Francisco. Brought to you by SiliconANGLE Media. Hey, welcome back everybody. Jeff Frick here with theCUBE. We're at RSA 2020, it's day four, it's Thursday. This is a crazy long conference, 40,000 people. Even with the challenges you know, kind of presented by coronavirus and there's a lot of weird stuff going on, the team pulled it together, they went forward, and even though there was a couple drops out here and there, you know, I think all in all, most people will tell you it's been a pretty successful conference. And we're excited to be joined by really one of the top level sponsors here that's still here and still doing good things. It's Vittorio Villarengo, sorry, the new interim CMO of MACV. Yep. Vittorio, I just call you Vittorio all the time. I yep. never look past your, uh, your first name. Great to see you. I, likewise. I, it's always a pleasure to be here with an institution of Silicon Valley. Oh, so. thank you, thank you. So interim C CMO, that, you know, I always think of like interim football coaches that, uh, that get pulled in halfway through the season. So the good news is you, uh, you kind of got the job and all the responsibilities. The bad news is you still have that interim thing, but you don't care, you just go to work, right? No, I, whenever you have an interim job, you have to just do the job, and then uh, that's the best, the best way to operate. Yeah, so again, I couldn't help but go back and look at that conversation that we had um, at Xerox Park which you know, is interesting, that's pretty foundational to everything that happens in Silicon Valley. It's so many discoveries up there, and you touched on some really key themes um, in the way you manage your teams, but I think they're really much more valuable and worth bringing back up again. And the context was using Scrum as a way to manage people, but more importantly, what you said is it forced you as a leader to set crisp priorities and have great communication and to continually do that on this two week pace yep. to keep everybody moving down the road. I think that is so powerful and so lacking, unfortunately, in a lot of organizations today. Yeah, look, I think that when you hire smart people, if you just make sure that they understand what the priorities are and then remove the obstacle and get out of the way, magical things happen. And I give you an example that, that is very close to your heart. Uh, when I took over um, a great team at Sky High that got, that got bought by McAfee, uh, they had content marketing down to a science, but they were lacking videos. So I brought that in, I said, okay, we, people watch videos, people engage with videos, we need to start telling the story through videos. And I started pushing, 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 and then I put, pulled back, and these guys took it to a whole new level. And then they're, they're doing videos that are very creative, they're very uh, they're crisp, and I'm like, yeah, my job is done. <laughs> it is really wild how video has become such an important way for education. I mean, it used to be, I remember the first time I ever saw a, a, an engineer use Google to answer a question on writing code. I had never seen that before. I'm not a coder. I thought, wow, I thought it was just for, yeah. you know, finding my local store or whatever. And now to see what, what really, I think YouTube has pushed people to expect that the answer to any question is that, should be in a video. Absolutely. Uh, so yesterday, literally, somebody from a company I don't even know stopped me and said, I watched your videos on container, thank you very much. I was like, what, you? And, and the, 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 the genesis of that was the salespeople asked me, hey, we're selling container security and all that, but I don't even understand what containers are. Like, okay, sure, so I shot a video, and I'm you know, the CMO, I was the vice president, I think you have to put your face on, on your content. It doesn't matter how senior you are, you're not in a corner office, you're down there with the team. So I, I got in the studio, based on my background at VMware, I knew virtual machines, and I said, okay, how do I explain this to somebody who's not technical? And next thing you know, it makes its way out there, not just to our sales force, but to uh, the market at large. It's fantastic. Right, well let me, let me ask you to follow up on that, because it seems like the world is very divergent as to those who kind of want their face and, and more their personality to be part of their business culture and their business messaging, and those that don't. And you know, as part of our process, we always are looking at people's LinkedIn and looking at people's Twitter. I get when people don't have Twitter, but it really surprises me when, when professionals, you know, senior professionals, but in the industry, aren't on LinkedIn. And, and it's just like, wow, that is such a different kind LinkedIn, of world. LinkedIn right now is, and I'm, I'm stealing this from Gary Van der Chuck, that is a big yep, yep. Uh, believer in this. LinkedIn right now is like Facebook, 10 years ago. You get amazing organic distribution, and it's a crime not to use it. Right. And the other thing is, if you don't use it, how are you going to inspire your team to do the right thing? Modern marketing is all about organic distribution with great content. If you're not doing it yourself, my mom, I grew up in a bakery. My mom, I used to look at my mom, we had a big bakery, we had eight people uh, working, and I said, Mom, why do you work so hard? Why, you know, you're first in, last out, 
And she said, look, you cannot ask your people to work harder than you do. Right. That right. was an amazing uh, lesson. It's not just about working hard and harder than your team. It's about are you walking the walk? Are you doing the content? Are you doing the modern marketing things that work today if you, ex if you expect your people to also do it? Yeah, it's, it's just funny because when, when we talk to them, I'm like, if you, if you don't even have a LinkedIn account, we shouldn't even be talking to you because you just won't get what we do. You won't see the value, you won't understand it, and if you're not get engaging at least a little bit in the world, and, and then you look at people, say like Michael Dell, I'll pick on her, or Pat Gelsinger, who, who use social media, and put their personalities out there, yeah. you know? And I think it's, it's you know, people want to know who these people are. They want to do business with people that they, that they, that they like, know, right? What's the worst to me? I can tell where somebody has, some, when an executive as somebody has managed an account, I can tell from a mile away. That's the other thing, you have to be genuine. You have right. to be, you know, who you are on your social and on your communication because people resonate with that, right? Now, they, right. They, all right, so what are you doing now? You got the new, the new title, you got some new, new power, you got a great brand, leading brand in the industry, been yeah. around for a while. What are some of your new priorities? What's some of the energy that you're bringing and where you want to go with this well, thing? My biggest priority right now is to get the brand and our marketing to catch up with what the products and the customers are already, which is uh, cloud, cloud, cloud. The, when we acquired, uh, so when we spun off from Intel two years ago, uh, we had this amazing uh, heritage in the endpoint uh, uh, security. And then we bought Sky High, and Sky High was com transformational from us, for us because it became the foundation for us to move to become a cloud-first organization. And, uh, and in the process of becoming a cloud-first organization and creating a business that is growing really fast, we also brought along the endpoint, which now is all delivered uh, from the cloud, with a cloud first, open, unified approach, which is exciting. And you see Edge is just an extension of endpoints, I would assume, at this yeah, stage so of the game. If you think about today, modern work gets done on with the backend in the cloud and accessing that, those backends from the uh, device, right? Right. And so our strategy is to secure data where modern work gets done, and it's in the device, in the cloud, and on the edge. You know, because data moves in and out of the cloud, and that's kind of the edge of the cloud. And that's where we launched this, this week at RSA, we launched Unified Cloud Edge, which is our kind of, uh, uh, Gardner calls it sassy. Uh, <laughs> so that we, we are kind of the security, we, have, we believe we have the most complete and unified uh, security uh, part of the sassy world. Okay, I just laugh at Gartner and and and, and the trough of disillusionment and Jeff. And I, I always go back to Mars Law. You know, Mars does not get enough credit for Mars Law. We've got we've got a lot of laws, but you know, we we Mars Law. We tend to overestimate in the short term, right, the impacts of these technologies, and completely underestimate, you know, really the long tail oh, yeah. of these technology improvements. And and you know, we see it here. So let's shift gears a little bit. When you have your customers are coming in here, and, and they walk into RSA for the first time, what do you tell? How do you tell people to navigate this crazy show and the five thousand vendors and the you know more kind of solutions and spin vocabulary than is probably uh, safe for anyone to consume over uh, it, three days? Uh, look, security is it's it's tough because you look around and say you have six seven hundred uh, vendors here. It's hard to stand out from the crowd. So I, what I tell our customers is one, use this as a way to meet with your strategic vendors in the booth upstairs. Right? That's where you conduct business and all that. And then walk around to see what, you know, from the, from the ground up, send your, your more junior team out there to see what's, what's happening because uh, some of these smaller companies that are out here uh, will be the big transformational companies of the future, like Sky High was three, four years ago, and now we're part of McAfee and, and leading the charge there. Yeah, just how do you how do you find the diamond in the rough, right? Because there's yeah. just so much, but it's but it's still the little guys that are often on the leading edge and the bleeding edge of the innovation. So you want to know what's going on. So, I, so that you're kind of walking into the back oh, yeah. corners of the uh, of the Plus floor I, as I'm well. I'm a li lo long, uh, lifelong learner, so I go around to see what people do. Uh, from a marketing perspective, because I, the last thing I want to do, I want to become, uh, you know, obsolete. <laughs> and the way you, you don't become obsolete is to see what the the new kids on the block do, and 
and and, and steal that idea, right. steal that track tactics, take it to the next level. Right. Right. So I want to ask you a, a sensitive question about about you know the conference itself and and the coronavirus thing, and you know we, we all saw what happened in Mobile World Congress. I guess it just got announced today that Facebook pulled F8, uh, their developer conference. We're in the conference business. You got you go to a lot of conferences. Um, you know, kind of, did you have some thought process? You know, there were some big sponsors that pulled out of this thing. How did you guys kind of uh, approach the situation? It's, it's a tough not, one. It's a, it's a really tough it, it's one. It's a very tough one, because you, the last thing you want to do is to put the uh, your, your employees and your customers at risk. But the way we looked at it was, there are zero cases of coronavirus in San Francisco, right? Uh, and um, we saw what the rest of the industry was doing, and we made the, the call to come here give good advice to our, to our employees, wash their hands and, and, and usual, and, and this tool will pass. Yeah, and yeah. Well, Vittorio, it's always great to, uh, it's always great to catch up with you. Well, likewise. I just love the energy, and, and congratulations, I know you'll do good things, and I uh, wouldn't be at all surprised if that interim, that interim uh, title fades away like we see with most great coaches. Good. So all thanks right. for stopping by. Uh, my pleasure. Thank all right, he's Vittorio, I'm Jeff. You're watching theCUBE, we're at RSA 2020 in San Francisco. Thanks for watching, we'll see you next time.